This morning, Gabrielle Zevin, who's become a new superstar on the writing scene, thanks to a novel that's become a huge hit, Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow. It's about two video game developers and their unique love story. The subject of video games might not be most people's first choice when they think of book material, but Zevin has already convinced millions otherwise. You bite off a lot of big issues, but I feel like it's important for you not to reveal your opinion on these things. I mean, I feel like you probably suspect them if you've read the book. But it's Gabrielle Zevin likes her work um, to speak for itself. No, and does this one ever. Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow tells the decades-long story of Sam and Sadie, frequently in love, but never lovers, business partners, in a burgeoning video game company. Here we go. We met Zevin at Barcade, a retro-themed gaming spot, where she did her best to keep the focus on her writing. You say, as a reader, you want to know as little as possible about the author. I do. Which, which makes my job difficult. <laughs> I try to keep as little information about myself as possible out there. For example, Zevin, of Korean and Jewish descent, has always been reluctant to tap into her own background as inspiration for her characters. Not this time. But I had a different feeling about this book. I felt more patient with myself. Weaving that mix of cultures into the fabric of Sam and Sadie's relationship and those they love and lose creating a story that has something for everyone. When I finished writing the book, the first person who read it was my partner. And he said, you wrote this book for me. And I said, no, I didn't. I kind of wrote it for me, you know, but I, I, I'm like glad he had such a strong response to it. And then I gave it to my second reader, who was my agent, and he finished it. And he had kind of a quavery sounding voice. And he said, you wrote this book for me. And I said, you know, Doug, no, I didn't. <laughs> Why does everybody think that you wrote this book for them? I don't know. Now it's like... Because I feel like I was thinking the same thing. I, it's like there's a magic to it. Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow is Zevin's 10th novel. She adapted her eighth, The Storied Life of A.J. Fickery, into a film, which was released last year. This one is my favorite. It is a book about the possibility of finding great love at any age. Don't you just love that? This is not for me. No problem. But none of her previous works had the staying power of this one. I can't explain it. Some of them have connected and some of them haven't connected, and that's the contract in a way, you know, and I feel at peace with that. I remember when I finished writing, I said to my partner, I really don't care what happens with this book because there were a way in which I felt um, satisfied with the work I had done. You know, so I don't know if my complete lack of caring about how it was going to receive contributed to an environment where uh, the universe, surprise, it's going to do really, really well. Zevin does seem like she was destined to write a great novel. She composed her first story at the age of two, or at least pretended to. My grandmother had an IBM Selectric typewriter, and I just was drawn to it. More than like any toy that anybody could have put in front of me, I was like, this thing is amazing. Like, it makes wonderful clacky noises, and when you press a button, like, look at, there it is on the, on paper, you know? And so I just loved the sound of the keys, you know, and that kind of thing. So they just set me in front of it on a little stool, and I, I set to typing. And it's like that joke, like, well, the monkeys eventually type Shakespeare, you know? Zevin's introduction to computers also started early. Both her parents worked for IBM. As an only child, she viewed video games as an escape from solitude, a means of communicating with the world behind the screen. The first generation of people to play video games as children were born in the late 1970s and early 1980s. We call them the Oregon Trail generation because they were likely to have played Oregon Trail in a computer lab somewhere. That's us. That's us. It's you and me. <laughs> and I feel like maybe those people hadn't been addressed. We're better to address that than in an arcade. No! Oh, oh wow. On. If you're of a certain age, you can't help but feel nostalgic looking around this room. Are you gonna win this? I don't think I'm gonna win it because they are like totally like in on me here. Oh my God. Something, some muscle memory about Pac-Man is kicking in for me. Come on. Oh my God. You yes! Won. <laughs>
<laughs> Why am I so childishly happy at that? More than just games, this can feel like reuniting with old friends. Uh, how do I get the cherries? Oh no. Get away from me! No! <laughs> it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen. Yeah! <laughs> While the technology has evolved beyond power pellets and magic fruits, in Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow, Zevin reminds us that for better or worse, games can do more than offer an escape. They can also help you define who you are. Is one of the lessons from the book that what happens in the virtual world can have real consequences? I think it is, you know, but in a way, uh, we're all babies when it comes to the internet. That's what I think. And, what does that mean? Well, we haven't had it very long. So the first year of YouTube is 2005. So that makes it 17 years old, 18 Amazing. years old. So it's just going off to college, you know? I think Facebook is 2006 or 2007. So these are all like aging teenagers at this point. And I think it's uh, unnatural to expect us to know how to deploy these tools yeah. in healthful and helpful ways right off the bat. My favorite book I've read in the last year. Really? Uh, it's wow. really, really special. It has that, you know, love, loss, redemption, moving on, all these universal themes that she just talks about. Again, people hear video games. It's yeah, about right. video game developers. Like, I don't know. I'm not sure about yes, that. Yes. Yeah. Give it a shot. But I love that you said that you feel like everyone feels like that book was written for them. Yeah. Because these themes are so universal that I think people just automatically, you know, you, you know, everyone's story is unique, but we've all shared so many of these experiences. It's a great story. And that's story. why it's so cool. Yeah. Anyway, great job to Gabrielle Zevin. All right, coming up for us from Marrakesh to San Francisco, he brought the flavors of his homeland to his two Michelin-starred restaurants in the Bay Area and locations in Hawaii as well. We will meet Chef Morad Lalu and sample some of his food next in the dish. And for those of you without local news, welcome back. Uh, we're talking about Gabrielle Zevin here a little bit more. Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow is this book that's just, it, it's sort of, it was, it was a little bit of a hit when it was first released, and then it just kept taking off, and it stayed on all these bestseller lists. But the other one I read then after, as I was researching this one, was The Storied Life of A.J. Fickery, mm -hmm. which was turned into a movie, movie. last year. Yes. And that's also really good. It's interesting because Gabrielle seems so self-deprecating, right, about yeah. herself and about her thoughts and ideas. And she said she doesn't even know why Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow really resonated with people. But I think she's incredible. Well, she is. And, and it's interesting how she talks about being, she was a little bit, I don't want to say selfish, but she's like, I didn't really care what people, I was at peace with myself yeah. when I wrote this book. Mm. She was, at this point, 10 novels in, and she's like, I'm going to write something for myself, mm. and I hope people like it. And I hope people feel passionate. And, and that's, in the end, what worked. But tell us the truth. How long did it take to win the game? I was going to ask. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, so I cleared, I, I cleared right. one level on Miss Pac-Man, which is quick. It only takes a minute or so. <laughs> but then I died the next time. Although, you know, I don't, I'm told that Ms. Pac Donkey Kong was far less successful for me. I like the uh, mention of Oregon Trail right there, yeah, too, because yeah. so many of us played that growing up. Yeah. And we were talking about Mary always dying of dysentery along the way. So wonderful memories. That's part of the book, too, that whole, anyway. <laughs> Yeah.